Today I'd like to talk to you about living a lifestyle of faith and recovery. And I want to tell you guys it's been amazing to be here with you guys the last eight weeks. And I'll be leaving this Sunday, but um, I just wanted to share briefly kind of a, a final thought about how faith and recovery are intertwined. So many of you, hopefully most of you, will someday soon be graduating from this program and you'll go back into the world out there. And... It, 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 will, it, it will really matter how you order your life. And that will determine whether you'll survive to live a new life or whether you'll die in addiction. So how? How do we order our lives out there? When you have a little time, I'd encourage you to grab a notebook and write out your plan. Obviously, you're going to have your work hours, but then set up the rest of the week. I remember in early recovery, I made sure I was hitting at least three to five AA and NA meetings a week. So I'd hit an NA meeting on Monday night at seven. Then I'd hit AA on Tuesday and Thursday. And then on Wednesday, I had a small group Bible study at my church. So when you get out, Google AA and NA meetings near your apartment, wherever you happen to be, and get that set up. Then Google some churches in your area. Try a few out and get plugged in. And then get hooked up with a Bible study. We, we have to order our lives. We, we have to have a daily, weekly routine that we do over and over and over again. All right? There's a lot of crazy in my head. There's a lot of, there's a lot of bad thoughts, bad ideas, uh, stupid ways of thinking. I have to just keep doing it over and over to keep it going right. You know? So... But it's, it's, it's really important to have those things out there. Because if you, ju if you just work and then come home to the apartment and sit there by yourself, you're going to be sitting there feeling lonely, disconnected, and that sick mind is going to start working. And pretty soon, you're going to be calling up those old friends, and then the relapse happens. Well, then you lose the job. Lose the apartment, and welcome back to the ARC, right? I know, I've lived it. Order your life. Live a lifestyle of faith and recovery. Every week, like clockwork, three to five meetings, Bible study, church service on Sunday. You get to know people at those places. You get connected and you start to network. You find a sponsor. You find some, someone at the church who can mentor you and guide you toward Jesus. Begin your mornings with prayer. Finish your days with Bible study in bed, studying it diligently. God will help us to stay clean and sober. But faith without works is dead. God does his part by removing our sins and setting us free from the compulsion to use. Our part is to do the footwork, to attend our meetings, attend our Bible studies, work the steps, and never give up. Because it's going to be hard out there. It's going to be really, really tough at times. Where everything in your brain is going to be screaming at you to use, and you're going to have to fight. But the big mistake I see people make in recovery is they remove one of the two pillars that hold their future together. Recovery works by two great pillars. The Christian church life and the 12-step recovery groups. Faith and recovery, they are companions that walk side by side through the life of recovery. If you remove the Christian church, the addict may stay clean, but they'll have no real life in themselves. And if you remove the 12 steps, the recovery groups, their chances of staying clean drop considerably. I've seen it many, many times. A self-righteous religious spirit de develops in them, in them that says, I don't need recovery anymore. But God led you to recovery. Don't leave behind the internal work of healing that happens in the steps and opportunities to make amends to people we've hurt and working with other suffering addicts. Faith and recovery. Keep both in your life always and you won't ever have to stumble. I know most of you are coming back from the depths of darkness that few men have ever seen. 
So be patient with this process. It took you a long time to get this low. It's going to take you a while to get back up, okay? Give it years. And never give up. Never give up. In conclusion, there's a portion of the Bible from the letter of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that I think really hits this home. It says, Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. God said, Let there be light in the darkness. He has made this light shine in our hearts so we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts. We ourselves are fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, amen, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in us. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit, and as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And that's the word I have for you today. As we transition into a time of altar call, I'd invite you to come forward and talk to the Lord right now about this. Talk to the Lord. Meet with him. He will meet with you at the altar. Come forward now.